Here we are, the start of the season. What are we going to do? We're going to look at plays. How many plays? Let's find out. Stick around. Greetings. Welcome back. Five Play Friday. Let's not delay. Let's look at our first play. You make the call play. What do you got? All right, what do you have on that play? Put your ruling down in the comments and stick around to the end of the show where we'll do a review of play number one. Here's Harrington, Turner in the corner, a big three to make it a one-point game, in and out, rebounded by Jimenia, and a foul is called with 7.2 to go, and Harvard-Westlake can put this thing away here at the line. Whoa, Sniper took out our player. What is going on on this play? What are the habits and fundamentals? What are we looking at to get better as basketball officials on this play? Hmm, okay. Obvious flop, right? Or is it, right? This player, so sometimes what we have to be aware of is players will, will indicate to the official, hey, I was fouled. By doing things, right? So let's watch our uh, number 15 red comes in and kicks our player. Did our white player kick at the player on the floor first? Right? But we have to see this. We have to see red 15 and this action. And we see the subsequent obvious embellishment by, uh, by a player in white. Right? So Red 15 felt that White kicked at Red. There's a lot of dead ball action going on here at a key moment of the game. So when you look at the habits and fundamentals of the officials on play, right? Our center official, ruling official, rules a foul, turns away. Our old lead, new trail, it or our old lead comes in in close proximity to the players, a habit and fundamental that we want, but in a, in a fashion we get too close to the play and can't see what's occurring on this play. So let's, so White kicks at our player on the floor. Red 15 kicks at our player who did the kicking, and and the our white player in White flops. Uh, in a way to indicate to the official, hey, something illegal happened to me, right? So a lot going on on this play. Yeah, yeah. End of game situations. Obviously, we want to be super aware of everything that happens in the game. We want to put ourselves in position to see the things that occur. This is a wildly unusual situation. Um. Yeah, which we have to be ready for in our games. We have to. All right, something happened in the post on this play. What do you have on this play, right? Obviously, something unusual, ungainly, uh, things are going on. Does this player travel, right? In order to travel, you must have control of the basketball. This player does not gain control, does some unusual movements, ultimately catches the ball, does more unusual movements as they try to regain their balance, 
but does nothing illegal. Great job on this play by our officials for withholding their whistle when something unusual occurs. When this play occurs, what do you think the energy from the blue team is going to be, right? The coach will be jumping up and down, you know, doing a lot of the, <laughs> right? Everybody in the gym thinks this is a travel because something unusual happened. Great job by our crew in this situation for withholding, being patient, if winning the play, and getting the play right. Ah, the dreaded look back when reporting by our calling official on this play, right? So obvious breakaway situation. We have a shove from behind, obvious intentional foul, no play on the basketball. The key question on this is had the player begun their habitual throwing motion, right? Our official is emphatic on this play that no, the ruling is that they had not. Um, and clearly the shove happens before the player actually begins their habitual throwing motion. Um, but we do have the dreaded look back, right? But we have high communication at the spot. It's what we want in these situations. Who's our shooter? What do we have? Right. We got a button hook by the official. We have a clear ruling, no shot, intentional foul. Failed to pick up who the foul was on, but those things happen. So a example of a play where we have an intentional foul, we need to make a ruling about whether the player had begun their habitual throwing motion. Obviously, if they had, the goal would be scored. We would still attempt two free throws in that situation with the lane cleared. Yeah. So we got to know that stuff. Okay, we have our center official ruling that a player who had left the floor returned to the floor and was guilty of a violation, wiping the shot. Ah, a disaster. Misapplication of this rule. This player leaves the court due to their momentum, not to a voluntary decision on the play. Plus, we have a new case play this year that clarifies that when a try is released and a player from the throwing team leaves the court voluntarily and returns to the court to grab the, and his first time basketball, <laughs> so many things wrong with this play, that that's actually a legal play as well. Further clarification, this is a clear misapplication of the rule, which costs the team a goal that should have been scored. Yeah, we don't want to make that mistake. We have to know that this rule, 9-3-3, where the player voluntarily leaves the playing court, is extremely limited in scope. It has nothing to do with a throw-in play. It has nothing to do with a player leaving the court for momentum. And even if a player voluntarily leaves, there's many situations where the first to touch upon return is not a violation. We have to get this rule right and understand it is extremely limited in scope.
Okay, blocking foul ruled by our lead official, and then we have some subsequent dead ball action. What are the habits and fundamentals of the crew on a play like this? This is a, just a great play to look at habits and fundamentals in this situation, as well as the ruling, etc. right? Anytime we miss something on the court, as we did previously on a previous play, right? We want to analyze, well, what, was I, what were we doing on the court? Right. And I, when I say we is we have to put ourselves into the situation when I am trail on a play like this. How do I behave? What do I look at? Et cetera. If I am center on this play, if I am lead on this play, et cetera. Right. That's how we can extract value as we watch plays on five play Friday. Right. So we have some dead ball action. Our player who was fouled offers a uh, a gift to the player who fouled them saying, here's a basketball to commemorate the fact that you just fouled, them, right? This could be deemed and should be deemed an unsporting action in this instance. There was no reason to do that. Right here, there you go, that's yours. And the player then subsequently throws the ball at the player who will be attempting free throws. That is the foul that is observed by our trail official. Okay, so we have a foul that will result in free throws, and we have a technical foul that has been assessed by our crew. Our lead does a great job of sending the teams to the benches because we're this is a layered play, right? We have this and we have this. We have to adjudicate how we're going to resume, et cetera. What do you have? So we send players to the benches. We're going to sort it out as a crew, right? So as lead... We have the foul. We don't observe the technical foul stuff. Our trail official observes the second action. And our center official is uh, focused more communicating with the lead and looks over all the action, dead ball on the play. Right? So as an outside official in this instance, we really need to focus on First of all, did the ball go in? Our lead may need to know that, right? And the subsequent action of the players. The lead official, our calling official in these instances, is often not going to pick up the dead ball activity. That's just the case, right? As outside officials, that's our job on a play like this. So let's sharpen up. When we watch our own game video, right, just recognize what are my habits and fundamentals as an outside official on a play like this, what would I be able to pick this up, or would I would I have habits and fundamentals that you know maybe a lot of times you'll see a center in this situation they go running to to uh, administer the free throws right and they don't even observe the players at all and if you're the trail official I'm going to have two officials who are moving on this play right so we just examine those habits and fundamentals and get better as basketball officials. All right, another quick example of players leaving the court. This is not an action that is unusual. Players, uh, you know, uh, either side of the court exchanging positions. One of them runs out of bounds. Of course, new this year, we have a case play that indicates that this player who has gained an advantage here, right, if they snuck up, you see how the defensive player recognizes where they are? There is no advantage to be gained here. Even if the pass came immediately to that player, it would not be a violation, right? In this instance, there's a significant delay, et cetera. So habits and fundamentals, when we see that player run out of bounds, though, we should give the delayed signal. Marking the fact that this player has voluntarily run out of bounds, right? Give the indication. What I would say in this instance is we give the indication, advantage, no advantage, drop the, drop the signal, 
right? We're only going to have that up for a brief moment, right? Simple, straightforward. But we have to get in the habit of this player voluntarily left the court. I am going to signal. And if they subsequently return to the court and no advantage is gained, it dissipates, then we drop the signal. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. But we should develop that habit of, of identifying this player has voluntarily left the court, which they clearly did. They chose, I'm going to run out of bounds to get to the other side. Yeah. So a good play to uh, emphasize what we need, habits and fundamentals. Yeah. To remind you, Matt, a little bit, left-handed Matt Anderson. That was the comparison Coach Fechner gave us tonight. Nice mid-range jumper from Anderson. That's off the mark. There again, Matt's sort of fading away on that one. Four bike flow. It's going to be an offensive foul tied up with Ryan Cooper there. Still a little bit of an elbow. And now he's squaring off you again. Good job by the official yep, there. Yep. Really nice job. Yep. They're shaking hands. Yep. They're getting it worked out. Competitive people, it happens. Ref did a nice job. Ryan and Rhett did a nice job. It's, it's uh, two guys going at it. That happens sometimes. Five and a half left in the second quarter here. Jack Cloth into the oh, game. Yeah, both coaches took him out too. Yep. Let him catch your breath. Yep. Cool it for him. There's always a challenge officiating bigger players being guarded by smaller players, right? Tall, big players, they're, the little, little, little gnats are buzzing around, doing things, etc. But at the same time, this is a flagrant foul. This is without question a flagrant foul. So when, we, when a player swings in this fashion, if it was inadvertent, we could have a player control foul. If it was excessive contact, we could have an intentional foul. And if we have a situation where a player, as the this player does on this play, identifies where the, their opponent is and violently swings their elbow to contact them in the head as this play, as we did on this play, this is a flagrant foul. Simply because a ball handler commits a intentional or flagrant foul does not mean that it's just a player control foul. So in this instance, we've got players, you know, do we get some arm contact? Possibly, right? We need to call those. Okay, I know where he is. I know where he is. Oh, he's not there anymore, baby. Yeah, yeah. And if you have something different, you're on the crew, you're the center, you're the, it's tough as the new lead. Um, you know, you can get to that calling official before they report the foul and say, hey, 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 here's what I have on that play. We have to discuss an upgrade on this play, right? But this is contact that is violent or savage in nature. We have an intent to harm an opponent. We have extreme contact on the play. That is a play that we need to rule a flagrant foul. It's as simple as that. Two points, number 30, Sika Unatoa. All right, pass, crash, play. They can always be challenging. Pass, crash, play. 
with a no whistle on the play. Was there illegal contact on this play? Is this a play we would not put a whistle on because of the advantage in this situation? These are good things to look at. Our crew's in great shape. Our center's looking off ball. A lot of officials will try to pick that up. Our trail has it. We got a no call on this play. Was this defender legal? Is that a charge? Is that a block? What do you have on this play? Right. Key to our judgment here is, was our defensive player in position prior to the offensive player leaving the floor? Players left the floor? I would say no. No, they were not. Could we say this is incidental contact? The team was if a scoring opportunity was imminent? It's certainly on the table, but that's illegal contact on this play. Yeah. Yeah, pass crash plays are tough, great to pregame, talk about who's going to take what, etc. If we have a no call on a play that needs a whistle, could another official come get it? Yeah, yeah, they could. Wait a minute, that can't be legal, right? All right, let's take a look at the play. Player catches an edge, slips and falls, stands up, picks up the basketball and passes it to a teammate, right? Our player in white is like, come on, ref, that can't be legal, can it? Well, let's see. We have a player who does nothing illegal. There's nothing illegal on this play by our ball handler. Possible illegal screen. Let's take a look. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think our player in white does a great athletic move to avoid contact. Yeah, that's a legal play. Another great example of withholding our whistle and not reacting to plays. Again, the energy going to be from white, our home team? What's the energy going to be from the crowd, our home crowd on a play like this? We can't respond to that. We can't elevate uh, and react to that. So a great job by our crew here on this play. Yeah, that's a legal play. Player does nothing illegal, even though it looks extremely unusual. Harping over to Faclaris. And a little miscommunication. Faclaris keeps it in. Picked up by Harpering. The ball's fumbled around. A tough foul from Kepin. That's going to send a River Ridge way. All right, something unusual happens on this play, right? Our post player catches the ball, dribbles, passes the ball to a teammate, and re- realizing the pass is errant, goes, tracks down the ball, grabs it, and flings it back, right? This is a violation. This is illegal by rule. Player has terminated their dribble. They can throw the pass, but once they've thrown the pass, they cannot then go retrieve the basketball. That would be considered a second Dribble, illegal dribble on this play. And then we have a subsequent foul on the play. Interesting uh, to look at that as well. So this is illegal as of right here. That's an illegal dribble by rule. 
right? We got a scrum for the basketball. Our center is in great position, no reaction, trying to go the other way, etc. Right? Would you deem this excessive contact play from behind? Or was it simply a matter of the player tripping? It's a good, good play to look at. I don't think that it was excessive contact. I think it's simply uh, a foul when the ball is loose. So it's an interesting play to look at. Just understand, this is illegal. This is illegal. All right, great play at the rim, great action. There's so many, there's several subtle things about this play. First of all, our rotation by our crew is excellent. It has the, all the proper energy. Lead comes across, trail doesn't move. They have the open look, then they flex out, right? A great rotation on this play. And then we also have a play at the basket. And, you know, in this, it, it, this season of looking at flopping plays, and we see the action by the red player. They are legal. Verticality applies. They are completely legal. But notice the, what happens on a play when a player stays legal and it continues to play basketball, right? There is a degree of displacement. They're not doing anything to embellish the displacement, right? And in my judgment, this is not a displacement foul. This is not a player control foul. Our offensive player, our defensive player, were both allowed competitive action at the rim. This is a great no call on this play. Definitely a two official play. I love it. I love the no call there by our crew on this play. So to me, what we have when the players are playing defense, in this season of evaluating flopping, when players are playing defense, there is a firmness, a strength, an energy, right, that we expect them to exhibit. And if they don't exhibit that on the slightest contact, everything goes backwards, right? Then that's not good. This player is playing basketball. Great play at the basket. We love to see it. We love to see plays like that in our game. Hey, back at the start of the show, we had that you make the call play. Let's review play number one. What do we have on this play? We have a flopping player on this play. Plus, that flopping player on the fall on the floor is ruled for a foul. So here in 2024, how are we going to adjudicate this play? Right? When the player is deemed to be flopping in this instance, the officials will give the signal but withhold a whistle. Does that mean that the player who's on the floor and does not have legal guarding position cannot be called for a foul? No, no, it does not. So we've given the warning. We l see the result of the play. We assess a personal foul on the player on the floor. And then if this play, what ha the team had previously been warned, then we would assess a technical foul as well. We would adjudicate the play in that order. We would clear the have the player shoot their merited free throws. We would have a team, any player or eligible substitute, attempt free throws for the technical foul and then resume the play with a division line throw in opposite the table. So this play from the past, right, new this year gives us more guidance, right? Some example of a play where we could have a flop warning. We could have a personal foul. And we could 
resume play either with the result of the foul or the technical foul if something had already been assessed. So a good play to look at. We like looking at plays, and this is a good one, right? It gets our brain thinking about possible scenarios where we have a flopping situation. And the flopping does not negate the fact that that player could ultimately be ruled for a foul. So a fantastic play to review. That's what we like to do. That's the show for today. Much appreciated. Special thanks to our show supporters. Always appreciated. And we have additional video content available for you here. We'll see you in the very next video. Take care, everybody. (laughs) 